Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're talking about solar panels. Actually, we're not just talking about it, we're going to be testing solar panels in various parts of our solar system to um, basically reinforce the idea that um, I started in the video that I made previously where I talked about how solar panels become exceptionally ineffective farther away from Earth. Um, one of the reasons I wanted to create uh, this particular craft is that it actually has well, it has three solar panels here. Uh, I'm going to extend all three of them. And in some sense, it actually resembles the um, record holder, the Juno mission. And why is it a record holder? Well, it's because it's the farthest solar panel based mission away from the sun. We're going to actually see how effective it is in real life because I've actually just installed the most realistic mods for Kerbal Space Program which essentially turned my game into exceptionally realistic simulator of space exploration. Now, this is an actual model of Earth in the, in the back there, um, and these solar panels also follow a very realistic um, way of generating energy. And so what I'm going to do is we're going to basically take a look at how many watt uh, each of these solar panels generates depending on the location in space. And here we're going to start with just Earth orbit, basically, you know, solar panels on Earth. And this particular panel, if you take a look at it, right here um, generates just over 1100 watts um, with about 98% efficiency. It might be difficult to see these numbers, but basically what this means is that this relatively large panel generates um, about double the electricity needed to power the computer you might be using to watch this video or in some sense um, actually most appliances in your kitchen um, so this is actually quite a lot of energy and Juno mission actually has three similar panels um, but as you'll see they actually become really ineffective now so just remember the number it's just over 1000 so it's about 1100 now let's uh, move this particular craft to orbit of Mercury just so I can show you how much more effective the panels get so close to the Sun now Mercury's distance is about you know about 40% the distance of Earth to the Sun and so here we are in this particular orbit uh, but can you take a guess and um, we'll basically guess how much energy will these panels produce compared to Earth now like I said, it's about 40% the distance. So I think a common sort of misconception is to assume that it's going to be double the energy. Now let's take a look at the panel. It's currently producing over 7,000 or close to about 8,000 watts. That's almost eight times as much. And this is where things get really, really tricky. And this is what most people don't realize is that the distance actually makes the panels um, much, much less efficient the farther from Earth you get. So um, for two distances, you get one fourth. For four distances, you get one sixteenth. Okay, let's just do this more practically by going to those locations so you can actually see. So remember this, around Mercury, it's just over 7,000. Or I guess in this case, it's about 7,500 at 96% efficiency, which would be close to 8,000 if it was 100% efficiency. It's actually quite a lot of energy. So producing solar panels around Mercury would be a very, very effective way of producing energy. And our next stop is the red planet, Mars. Now, Mars is at a distance of about one and a half AU, so about 50% as far away. But because of the way that uh, the efficiency works, as you can imagine, the panel efficiency will actually drop dramatically more. As a matter of fact, it's about a half of what it is on Earth. So here we'll get about um, 540 or so watts for the same size of a panel. So as you can see, even at this little distance or little increase in distance, the actual efficiency drops quite dramatically. So the Opportunity Rover that you see on the screen right now that actually was active on Mars for a very long time and has basically the record for the longest distance traveled by a rover um, has actually been disabled by a Martian storm because its panels are not big enough and um, because I guess a lot of uh, the area on the panels was covered by Martian dust and so it's no longer producing enough energy. Uh, we're still hoping to recover this rover maybe sometime in the future and we're hoping to maybe even uh, somehow re-enable it but for now the actual rover is uh, kind of unofficially lost. So in other words if you were to take a look at the total area of panels here on Earth, uh, this would produce twice as much energy as it does on Mars. 
All right, so this is kind of where officially we would technically stop using panels. Even on Mars, they're not going to be that efficient. But if we go farther away from the sun, the efficiency of solar energy decreases quite dramatically. So let's go to our next destination, the asteroid belt, but specifically Ceres. Now this is um, about two and a half AU away from the sun, so 2.5 times the distance of Earth to the sun. And these panels, if you were to look at their efficiency now, even with 100% efficiency, are only generating 126 watts. That is a huge drop of efficiency. 126 watts is essentially approximately like eight times less than it was on Earth. And 126 watts is actually relatively little. Uh, I believe one of my older laptops was about 125 watts rated. And so in some sense, this is actually a lot less than um, many spacecraft might even need. So don't expect to bring a very, very large amount of appliances to Ceres, assuming you're going to be powering them using solar panels. And now let's go to where Juno is, basically Jupiter. And I think I'm going to park right here uh, next to Io, the closest uh, Galilean moon of Jupiter, uh, mostly because it's beautiful and also because it's relatively safe here in comparison to being around Jupiter where things could always go wrong. Anyway, so um, here, this is where Juno is, and it does kind of look very similar, and actually, okay, its panels are dramatically bigger than this. As a matter of fact, if you look at the length of a single panel on Juno, um, you'll find out that it's about the length of a school bus. It's really, really big. These are huge, huge panels, and the actual Juno itself is also pretty big as well. Um, now, this is currently the farthest we've been away from the sun using solar panels, and it's very likely that this is going to be the only such mission because as we've been discovering, it's just not very efficient. It's literally like bringing a tiny solar panel with you um, around Earth's orbit. So can you actually guess what we're going to be producing here in terms of energy? Well, let's take a look. At 98% efficiency, I'm getting about 44, close to 45 watts. About a third of what I was getting um, on uh, Ceres. And I guess it's about 1 25th of what I was getting on Earth. So these relatively large looking panels, and I actually forgot to compare the size here to a typical uh, person, in this case, a, a little Kerbal astronaut. Let's actually just fly next to it so you can see how big these are. These relatively large panels are barely producing any energy at all now. 40 watts is, uh, well, it's a light bulb, a non-LED light bulb. Um, you could, I guess, in some sense, power three of them here because we have literally three solar panels of uh, this size, but um, don't expect to actually power a tremendously powerful computer to control all of these systems or really have much else going on here for the astronauts to actually uh, be able to survive. Which is, of course, why all of the missions that were farther away than Jupiter, specifically pretty much all of the Pioneer missions, all of the Voyager missions, and um, the vast majority of missions that explore the outer solar system, have always been using nuclear power. Now, why does Juno not use nuclear power? Why did they actually bring these solar panels? I'm sure there are other reasons, such as, for example, actually finding out how efficient this is. But the biggest reason is, of course, that we are unfortunately unable to produce more plutonium because of all of the uh, nuclear weapon regulations. Plutonium by itself um, is actually a byproduct of nuclear weapon production. And uh, for the most part, because of all of the agreements that were made between USA and USSR, and in, I guess, more recent case, Russia, the plutonium production has actually been pretty much entirely stopped. Now, so that also means that... Um, the space missions using plutonium are in a bit of a pickle right now. But let's just say, for the sake of the experiment, we were crazy enough to bring these solar panels to Saturn and to basically uh, its beautiful moon Titan. How effective are these panels going to be? This actually kind of relates to another video I made where I talked about uh, potential ways of producing energy on Titan uh, if we one day colonize it, hopefully when we colonize it. And the idea here is that, well, solar panels, nuclear energy is really out of the question because we just can't, like I mentioned before. 
And so you may want to actually find out from the video, I don't want to spoil it for you, but let's find out how effective are the solar panels above Titan. And it seems to be about 12 watts. 12 watts. That's, that's basically my phone charger. I think my phone charger produces 12 watts. Three phone chargers. That's all. You can literally charge three smartphones. That's, that's all it's good for. Now imagine if we were to land on Titan where the actual atmosphere obscures most of the sunlight, this would actually decrease by at least a factor of five, maybe even more. And so this is why solar panels and pretty much uh, most of the other common space techniques to produce energy are not going to work on Titan at all. All right, so that's very unfortunate, but let's keep going just for the sakes of fun and go all the way to Pluto. How much energy would these panels produce around Pluto? Now there's our beautiful Pluto uh, that's no longer a planet, unfortunately, although in my heart it always will be. And if we look behind us, uh, we'll somewhere over there. There it is. Find the sun. That little star right there, that's our sun. That's how far away it is. The distance here is about 40 AU, uh, maybe a little bit less than that. But what about the energy that's being produced? And this is actually Pluto's partner, Charon. If we were to take a look at the panels, and I actually have to position my craft so it's facing the sun a little bit more straight on, we'll get one single watt. One watt of power per huge panel that you see right here. Now, that's over a thousand times less than around Earth. And that basically means that um, exploring the outer solar system with solar panels is really out of the question. It's just completely useless. This is just weight you're bringing with you. That's not going to do anything. So in, uh, in the future, when we start exploring outer solar system, we'll have to create new means of energy production, something that is, I guess, based on some other um, idea that maybe doesn't exist just yet. And if one day we can actually start producing plutonium without endangering human species and creating some kind of a nuclear war disaster, that would be great. But otherwise, we definitely have to start looking for a new source of energy because this is just not acceptable. Anyway, so that's all I wanted to do in this video. I wanted to really give you an actual uh, simulation and an analysis of how solar panels become very ineffective with distance. And of course, use these very realistic mods that I installed in Kerbal Space Program to um, allow me to do this simulation. Now, in one of the future videos, we might explore this a little bit further and hopefully we'll actually even find some kind of a idea that could potentially work um, in real life as well. And we might even be able to recreate it in the Curve of Space program. But for now, that's really all I wanted to do. And on this note, thank you for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this video and hopefully now you'll learn a little bit more about both solar panels, space exploration, and in some sense, the little gap that we have in terms of producing power in the outer regions of solar system. Come back tomorrow to learn something else, subscribe if you still haven't, and maybe even consider supporting this channel on Patreon. I'll see you guys tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye bye. And now, what I want to do is actually land on Titan and find out what we can actually generate there as well. Let's try this in one of the future videos.